Uh, hey there, Gavin. Oh, hey, Prof, how's it going? What are you doing in my office? Well, many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, when is Magic the Gathering R&D going to come and visit the Prof? And I was in town, so I just, I don't know, figured I'd come on down. Cool, cool. You know, I, I have an alarm system, so how exactly did you get in here? Yeah, but it's only a four-digit code, and like to get into R&D, you have to show that you can crack a four-digit code. I crack that on like a Tuesday for fun. Wait, has R&D been in my office before? Your office? No, 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 not your office. Cool, well, as ominous as that sounds, I would love to interview you about Magic the Gathering. Uh, the interview sets over here if you want to talk about it now. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to do an interview with you. That sounds great, I mean, that's what I'm down here for. Why exactly were you sorting my cards? Well, you have your cards sorted by set, which is like kind of useful, but I thought I would actually sort them by most likely to be banned. I just as a little courtesy for you, but it's fine. I can come back to this later. Let me um, just put these here. Great, let's do this. Huh, I think I just wanna... Most likely to be banned. No. <laughs> Say, Gavin. Say, Prof. Have you ever heard of this format that plays only commons from throughout Magic's history called Popper? I have a distinct feeling you're going to tell me more about it. Actually, I'm gonna ask you more about it because oh. today, what you are here for is giving answers to the professor's popper questions. I am going to grill you on all things popper that the community wants to know. Oh man, grill, now I'm hungry. Well, you know, I, it, actually, I'm a big popper player. All jokes aside, I've been playing popper a lot recently and I'm excited to, yeah, give some thoughts on it to you, for sure. When are you reprinting Oubliette? I've got a plan. What is it? How are you going to reprint this card? Oh, we're, we're actually starting the interview. You, 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 uh, reprint. All right. All right Oubliette. Let's, let's, let's do, that, do the same intro. No, no, no. We're going, baby. We're reprint it. All right. Uh, all right. Seriously? You want to know? Ye I, I, I yes. Have, I have a, so, Oubliette. There's a lot of talk online about Oubliette. Yes. A lot of, a lot of discussion about can we do this? And I fired back a few times as well. It doesn't fit on a magic card, all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. I'm happy to say we have a plan for it. I can't say where it's coming. You'll need to be patient, but we do have a plan for Oubliette. How much, it hasn't been reprinted since Arabian Nights. How much more patient do we need to be? Well, I guess you're right. <laughs> the alternative to being patient is not having it. So okay, we'll, uh, be patient, we'll be patient, yeah, be patient. Be patient. But I, I just want to say I've listened to the popper community, listened to you especially. Thanks for harping on this. And we do have a plan for Oubliette. Like I said, you're going to have to be patient. Things take a while sometimes in R&D, but there is a set we are thinking about putting it in. So, wow. So stay tuned. Wow. Common or uncommon? <laughs> no, uh, I, get, I can't get quite. It, it, Boy, that, that's, a, that's a little much, but I like the pushing, Professor. I like the pushing. All right. Um, I guess the biggest question about Popper, besides Oubliette, is simply why we have yet to see and whether we ever will see a unified popper legality list currently and we have a ptq coming up at gpla or i'm sorry we have a mcq coming up at mfla uh and this is a huge event if you win this event you go to the pro tour i'm sorry the mythic championship and from playing popper but they have to use the magic online legality when are we going to see or are we ever going to see that unified popper uh, uh, legality officially stated from Wizards? Well, first of all, I'm super excited that Channel Firewall is running the PTQ. Yes. Uh, M M M MCQ. MC is running MCQ. Is running the MCQ at uh, Magic Fest LA. That's going to be awesome. Like I. I unfortunately, I actually looked into tickets and I have plans that weekend, so I can't make it down, unfortunately. But I would love to go and be there as a popper player. Yes. I can't plan the event, but just seeing what decks people bring to the table, right. what's going on, how the tournament goes, I'll be following it online for okay. sure. So, really excited about that. Um, as far as the unifying of the real life list and the online list, that's a really popular issue that's come up a number of times. It's something that we are well aware of. 
So uh, it's, it's on our radar as a thing to look at. And mm -hmm. as Popper becomes more and more popular and more people are paying attention to it, it's a larger issue than ever. So we want to make sure we do it right. And when mm -hmm. we implement it, we you know pick the correct direction to go down. So we're paying attention to it right now. And at some point in the future, you might see an announcement from us. Despite the fact that we don't have an official ruling on a paper popper legality, and so we use the Magic Online ruling, Magic Online has had popper officially with its own official ban list, which is what we use in paper, for some time now. It's been an incredibly popular format on Magic Online long before Arena. Popper and popper leagues and popper events have been a, a staple of this uh, uh, client and yet we still do not have Popper on Gatherer. If you want to check easily and effectively for Popper legality just for online, we can't go to the official search engine. We have to go to something such as Scryfall uh, in order to check Popper legality. When are we going to see Popper legality just come to the search engine? Many feel this would be such a nice gesture just to say, yeah, the format exists, here you go. We have, we have it listed. What, what's up with this? Why is it not on Gatherer? Yeah, well, it's not my department. So, I understand that. Uh, so I, I don't do any of the coding on Gatherer, really work on any of that yes. stuff. I'm totally on board with getting our formats into Gatherer. So it's something that we'll continue to work on. And, and also, I mean, with the note that, um, you know, once again, Popper is getting bigger and bigger. We're paying attention to it more than ever right now. And there is that discussion between what should the legality be. Like when Card Kingdom, for example, runs their events, they use a lot of the paper, uh, paper legality. Mm -hmm. like Mystic Remora, for example, is a card that you can play in their events. And that's not allowed online Popper, just as one example sure. of a thing that's available. Desert, I believe, is also in that category of a thing that Card Kingdom allows at their events. So we're trying to hone down what, what that is, or we're looking at it currently. And yeah, so you are looking at it currently. Well, like you, you just said we're looking at it currently. Is that accurate? It is being looked at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people okay. in R and D. Well, are, people, we don't know on our side of the table. We don't know. So for all we know, now it's not something we're looking I mean, at. We'd like to look at it someday, but you are looking at it. I mean, it. one thing that's important to me for for all you all to know is it's not like we're just like la 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 popper popper popper. No, we, we, you we, have we, a lot we, on your plate. We're paying attention, okay. absolutely. Right. And the work you've done to make this help us make this format big, and the work Channel Fireball's done and Card Kingdom have done to help make this format big, has totally caught our attention. We're paying attention to it, and well. I can't say, yes, we're going to make an right. announcement about Popper here no, or there no, or whatever. No, I understand that. The discussions are happening. Okay, that's, that's, but that's big news. Just to exciting. know, even though I understand, I appreciate you can't say what, you know, in terms of timeline, in terms of if it's actually going to happen, just to know discussions are happening is big. Because there was a time, I believe, discussions probably weren't happening. And so uh, uh, discussions happening is, 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 make, makes me feel good. There have been many, many Popper discussions, so fear not about that. Uh, you're in R&D, and I know you're a product architect right now, and I want to talk about possible popper playable products uh, 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 in a moment. But are there cards that are designed for new block sets uh, that are made with popper in mind? Does popper get any consideration about, ooh, I'd love to put this card in popper. Ooh, I'd love to design this common with popper in mind. Or is popper not anything that ever is mentioned in card design for new sets? So there's a time where I could pretty easily just say the answer was no, right? right? I mean, about you started your popper push maybe a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. You know, a lot of people attribute it as like my popper push, but the truth is, is I was pushing popper uh, uh, from very early days. It just took off about a year and a half ago. And so this is why a lot of people are like, oh, stop being humble, but it's, it's true. It, it's really just that the player base caught on to this format. The player base really, really is excited. The player base are the ones showing up with all these huge uh, numbers at side events every, that are able to support it. Every single GP, every single weekend has daily popper events that are getting great numbers. Uh, uh, and that's not me. That is just that people want to play this format. But yeah, I would say that the explosion in popper, which I was a voice of, but not, uh, it wasn't me, it was the community, uh, about a year and a half ago is when it really started exploding. Absolutely, and, and by the way, that explosion's been great. Yeah. I've, I've played in numerous popper events at uh, Grand Prix. Yes. When I was at uh, Grand Prix Las Vegas last year, I played in the popper championship. It was a blast. I've yes. had a great time yes. with the format. Um, to, to your question about our card design, like I said, there was a time where the answer was no. But now that it is bigger and going on, like does it take precedence over standard or modern designs? Well, no, I mean, I'll be honest there. But as we're working on our comments, it's on our radar. And I've gone through a number of files, left a comment, ooh, this could be good in popper, or ooh, this might make an impact. And that, that's something we think about. In fact, my 
One of my bigger regrets about Battle Bond is I finished Battle Bond kind of right before the popper mm. boom started happening, and I really wish I could have gone back and made one more common or even a downshift that impacted the format. In reality, not really a lot came out of that. I saw a few people trying out the um, the goblins that give you two mana when they come into play, the concessions vendors, but mm -hmm. that didn't really get anywhere. A few people tried Warriors decks, that didn't really go anywhere. And I wish I'd maybe downshifted one card or something like that. And it is a thing that I care about. Um, every designer cares about things differently. Some designers care about making cards for popper, some don't. I'm one of the ones that think up some things about it consciously. And as I'm working on future sets, especially reprint products, ancillary products, things like Battle Bond, where you have the opportunity to downshift or make new commons at a power level that would be playable in popper, it is very much on my mind. And as a designer, there's some effects that I'm trying to get into popper that I want to uh, be able to print eventually. For example, because I feel like that was going to be a question you might ask, mm -hmm. I. I play blue-black control. I play teachings. I love the fact that Evan Carr's justice exists as like a sweeper, a way to clear the board. I think that's really important to a stable format, having those board clearers. Sure. And black is one of the only colors with that right now. Right. right? So I'd love to see that show up in more colors, and especially red. I'd love for red to have a board sweeper of some kind, like a pyroclasm right. or something like that. Just a slightly better electricery or, or, or something would do the trick. Because the difference say. between one damage and two damage is huge, Dude. especially when decks like elves are playing things like spider silk armor to help get their toughness up. So uh, if, tiny, tiny things like that. Or uh, more big green creatures that are good in the long game. Right now, you're kind of like your big creatures are Gurmag Angler, things mm -hmm. like that that you cheat into play. And with green decks, you can ramp, you can go along, but like Ulamog's Crusher is there. That's a fine thing you can cast, but like there's not a lot of just big, good green creatures or a reason to play green uh, to ramp into big stuff. And I'd love to see more of that that actually has an impact at common. Do you think that the resurgence in, uh, or the surgence of uh, <laughs> popper popularity, popularity uh, is having any type of uh, effect internally on New World Order, which a large aspect of was keep common, simple, and basic? And a lot of popper decks are basing themselves off of some of these pre New World Order uh, cards and commons that did astonishing things. The idea of today making a card that did something like Tortured Existence, for example, is just outrageous. Uh, many players are astonished when I remind them that original Counterspell, original Lightning Bolt, these are cards that were printed at common. Chain Lightning is legal in Popper. Fire Blast is legal in Popper because these are all common cards long before New World Order. Is it possible that just a little bit of uh, uh, leeway is going to be given to occasionally let an interesting and powerful common card through? Or is New World Order really gonna stand? Right, I mean, it's interesting because when I started playing Popper, I actually played it ages and ages ago on Magic Online, kind yes. of when I was starting you out. You were into it before it was popular. Oh yeah, but before it was Before popular. the Professor Popper, you uh, pop -popper. Popper. Popper -ler. Popper -ler. Anyway, there's, there's a pun there, someone in the comments will figure it out. But um, I remember it was around when Time Spiral was coming out, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was playing, it's funny, I was still playing Teachings back then. Right. I was like using it. Monster. Dude, it's one of my favorite archetypes of all time. Yeah. Just, you're getting all this value. It's great. It's great. Um, anyway, so you had you know Aaron Ephemerons that were being played at the time, and your teachings, and like all these complicated time spiral cards. And time spiral is a set that just basically that that was pre New World Order. It was in fact the impetus for this New World Order thing. Right. And a lot of those cards saw play then, back in those days. Still see play today. Um, the thing about, though about New World Order is a lot of people think that it means we can't make any complicated comments, mm -hmm. which is actually not true. It, that's a good shorthand. But it means that 80% of our commons in our sets need to be New World Order friendly. But that gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Sometimes you yeah. do get those complicated commons with weird mechanics to fill important roles. We can put those there. And then in ancillary products like Battle Bond, you know, innovation sets, things like that, we get to play with it even a little bit more. And there's opportunity there to put stuff. Plus, not to mention, uh, Commander decks have commons. Ash Barons, for example, talk about a card that was greatly impactful mm -hmm. to come out of a Commander deck. Yeah, there you go. There's Ash Baron. So there is room to print those cards. And with that said, there are ways to make simple cards that are still attractive to popper players at common. There's plenty of room to put that. Um, in Dominaria, Adventurous Impulse. Pretty simple overall card. Look at your top three. Pick one, put it into your hand that's, that's a creature or a land. It's not a complicated card, but it made an impact in Popper. The core set, our most recent core set, had a few cards that have been showing up in Popper decks as well. The uh, Vyashino Pyromancer, I believe, one of them. Uh, oh, yeah. A few yeah, others, yeah. right? And so we can still make these impactful cards that show up in the format, 
and have interesting effects without having to necessarily do some of the New World Order breaking stuff. But yes, absolutely, I get it. Tortured existence, that would never that's be nuts. a common by today's But that's standards. great that we have that, and it's, it's, it's really great that we, we do have access to that, to be able to play with these old cards in Popper. Uh, a lot of people feel that the commons-only format is uh, going to be self-limiting, but actually there's some really powerful moves and powerful decks. In fact, I often like to joke and say my popper deck could beat up your standard <laughs> deck. And, and when I can put together a common only deck that's legal and popper that probably could beat a lot of standard decks, that, that's some, some real feel good. So yeah. hopefully, you know. Well, it, it's funny actually, at uh, Grand Prix Seattle last year, which was Legacy, uh, my good friends Henry and Holly both played Delver. Mm -hmm. and their main experience playing the deck was in Popper, Popper Delver, and they took their, in, their knowledge from that, made a few tweaks, of course, to legacyify the deck, and then used that to actually do well in the Legacy Tournament. So it goes to show that these formats do have good building blocks, that decks that are good in Legacy are still around in Popper, and Delver, of course, probably the best deck right now, one of the right, best decks right. in, in Popper. And uh, so there's a lot of room to play around with there, and Popper can teach you a lot of great things for learning these, these other formats. Who exactly looks at Popper as a format in order to monitor things such as uh, cards that maybe might need to be banned? You mentioned Delver is possibly one of the most powerful decks in Popper right now. There's often a lot of discussion that Blue is uh, very, very much overpowered in Popper. There's always a debate in every format about bans, but I'm very curious uh, whose role or job it is at Wizards of the Coast to examine the health of the format for Popper specifically and, and make those determinations. So our play design team works on all the ban and restricted updates for all of our formats. I see. So they monitor standard, they monitor modern, and they monitor Popper as well. So that's something they're looking at, and Ian Duke is a big point person for that, along with the whole cadre of people like Andrew Brown, Donald Smith, Melissa DeTora. That's all play design. All yeah, play, play designers, design. right? And they are so key to this. Oh, wow. Okay, that's so, very interesting. So they're paying attention and trying to play the format where they can, and also asking for help where they need it, right? Like, if they don't play a lot of a format, they'll talk to people who have who have played the format. So they're gaining a lot of opinions, gathering information, looking at what's written online. I know a few uh, popper pundits have articles online like Alex Ullman and Kendra Smith who write quite Fantastic a bit. Fantastic people. I encourage uh, uh, everyone to check out. I'll put a few links in the video description. So we're always reading and, and they're always checking out articles like that to try and form their opinions. And then also looking at you know information for, for Magic Online as well, looking at those tournament results. So they're taking all that into account to help make their decisions. And they'll be able to take in some uh, information from this upcoming PTQ at GPLA. That'll be interesting yeah, as absolutely. well. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime deck lists show up that Channel Fireball puts up from yeah. the events they run, or when Card Kingdom does as well, those are things that we can take a look at too. For example, a few decks have come out of those Card Kingdom tournaments too, right? Like the blue-red kind of um, explosive prowess deck. Mm -hmm. The first time I ever saw it was there, and then that's exploded onto the popper scene. Right. So, you know, we are always looking at those deck lists and trying to keep tabs on what's going on. With the caveat that, of course, standard, modern, formats that are more played currently take, take precedence on what we're watching. Popper is always something we have our eye on. Obviously, Wizards of the Coast is a company. Obviously, Wizards of the Coast wants to make products for the purpose of selling those profits and uh, products and profiting, and that is reasonable and understandable. And so uh, my question to you is, is, do you feel Popper is a format that can ever be sufficiently monetized in the eyes of the company uh, uh, so as to get more attention than it currently does by way of perhaps uh, pre-constructed Popper products? Or there have been talk about things such as a Popper Cube uh, or Popper Masters. I'm not so sure I'm fully uh, on board with Popper Masters, but just in general, before we get to, to specifics of possible Popper products, do you think Popper can be uh, seen as something that does bring in player interest and even player uh, uh, dollars? I always feel that one of the great ways to make a good magic set is to get as many people excited about the set as possible. One of the things I think Dominaria did really well is it's like, let's get standard players excited. Let's get modern players excited. Yeah. Let's get old players excited. Let's get new players excited. And on that list of people to make excited is Popper. There were a few cards there that definitely interested Popper players. Absolutely. Yes. And just finding ways to get everyone excited is really important. So in our mainline sets, definitely uh, on our radar, Like I think we just get people wanting to buy our sets because there's a thing they're excited about from the set. So absolutely, we care about it there. As far as products go, 
I mean, I think there is room at some point to potentially do a Popper product. That could very, very well happen at some point in the future, especially if Popper keeps growing and its popularity keeps, you know, hitting these huge, huge numbers. But also, there's ways in our other products to find things for Popper to do. Uh, using the Master Series as an example, we've done a ton of rarity downshifts, which have grabbed the attention of many, oh, yes. many Popper players. We've found the opportunity to reprint popular Popper cards like Ash Barons in our master sets. And that's a way to make sure those people want to come in, want to purchase those sets. So there are plenty of ways, I think, to get popper players excited in our sets, not even necessarily with a product that's just for them, but by making sure they're included in the bunch of people we're designing magic for. So is it possible that we will one day see a popper pre-constructed deck? For me, and for everyone at Wizards, frankly, it's just all about how popular the format is. Mm -hmm. right? We make things for standard, like the Challenger decks, because that format's popular. A lot of people play it. We, we tried Battle Bond because we saw that Two Headed Giant was gaining a lot of popularity at pre-releases. People have been playing it for ages. They were excited about it. We wanted to expand that format. As Popper keeps growing and people keep getting more and more excited about Popper, as it, if it keeps hitting these tall, tall heights and we want to support it, absolutely we make a product for it. If, especially if we want to throw our full weight behind it, a product is a natural thing for us to want to create, right? Because if we want to support something new, the best way is to get those cards out there for people to play with. Plus, it doesn't hurt that a lot of popper staples are also just things you want in other formats. The brainstorms of the world, the delvers of the world. Like these are things that, I'm just naming cards from, from Delver again, but these are all things that players just want to own for their legacy decks. The lightning bolts of the world, counter spells, right? The gushes, right? assuming that's in popper. Yeah, I guess you'll find out in a few days, right? Yes. So. Uh, but for those watching, this is recorded before the ban announcement. I'm uh, trying to trick Gavin into letting me know if Gush has been banned. But there's just a lot of popular yes. popper cards, which is quite a thing to say. If you ever say popular popper together, that's a tongue twister. Oh, yes. P popper is prone, popper's prone to uh, precarious pronunciation predicaments. Perhaps, perchance, professor. perhaps, professor, perchance, uh, privately <laughs> pursuing this private Pony back conversation. Nope, we lost it at Pony. We back. lost it. We lost, we lost it. it. I was trying. So it's I not impossible. It's not impossible. No. Uh, 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 if they feel that there's play, player demand, if they feel that the sets are going to sell, and I like that you said that there's uh, uh, access to other formats, and that the, a lot of the popper reprints are cards that are played elsewhere as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, a big thing to me is like. I want to give Magic players what they want. If there's a large enough demand for something, mm -hmm. let's give it to the players. And there are some cases where our hands are more tied than others, right? Mm -hmm. But let's find the places where we can do it, where it makes sense, and deploy. And Popper is one where, absolutely, if it's popular enough with the audience, if, we, if our data shows a lot of people are playing Popper, let's make it happen. What do, what do we have to do then to, because it feels like we have had such a, a explosion in excitement and demand for Popper, and yet it still feels as though uh, Wizards of the Coast just is not supporting the format. All the stuff I talked about at the beginning can be excused away, things like the, 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 the legality list and the gatherer, but there's almost never articles on the mothership on Popper. The mothership is never seeming to encourage or even acknowledge Popper play. And when you look at a brand new format such as Brawl that was introduced last year, it almost felt from a player perspective that it was just deafening how much the m the mothership was excited about this new format and going on about this new format and meanwhile we're turning out with bigger numbers at events where we're constantly excited about this and, and it, it, what do we have to do to to start getting you excited for it i know you personally but wizards of the coast what is it that we have to do at what point w will we start to see the mothership get behind promoting and pushing Popper even just a little. I'd be happy with one tenth of the attention you gave to Brawl to Popper. Just a lick, just want a lick of, of what you gave Brawl. Well, yeah, kind of pulling those two parts away a little bit because there's two kind of questions okay. nestled in all there. All right, all right. Um, the first is I think the community and Channel Fireball and you have done a great job of bringing it from kind of not zero, but like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing on Magic Online, it happens sometimes, to like a, a pretty well acknowledged position now. Like it's gone in the past year and a half or so from not being a thing that we were really looking at that heavily unless there was a huge outcry about a card needing to get banned in the community, like when Temporal Fisher was causing all kinds of problems or what <laughs> have you way back in the day. Um, 
So you brought it up high, and I think the best thing you can do is just continue to have great turnouts at events. You know, Channel Fireballs, like I said, is doing a great job running these events. Card Kingdom is doing a great job running these events, and just continue to show that it's a popular format and that there's a lot of people who want to play um, at all levels too, not just big events, but that there's a lot of store level stuff that wants to happen, which I've been seeing more and more of crop up, which is really great uh, news for the format. Also, please keep in mind that it takes time, right? Like, sure. It, our lead time on a product is like a year and a half to two years sometimes. For, at a year and a half to two years. That's about when that popper started to so, explode. So, so it can take a while. Maybe something's coming soon. So it can take a while okay. for stuff to come out. Um, so, so that's that's one half of things. Okay. The, the other thing is uh, the brawl to popper comparison. Uh, one, one thing I want, want to mention about that is to me th those are two kind of different animals, right? Popper is more of a competitive one-on-one -on -one format. It actually, I mean, it already exists. There's events on Magic Online being run for it all the time. Brawl was a brand new thing, and we needed to, you know, try to get it out of the gates to the best job we could, you know, get, start running, get people excited about it. We put that up on Magic Online as an option people could play with. We talked about it a bunch. But that, that was a new thing, mm -hmm. as opposed to an established thing. Even though Popper's having this resurgence, it already has a lot of that support built in. It's had Magic Online tournaments for ages, for example. So, I mean, they kind of had different uh, points there that we were, we were coming from. But... You know, there's nothing that stops me from talking about Popper online. I talk about it all the time. So one of the things that uh, a lot of people feel is uh, an unfair hindrance on Popper is the fact that currently, if a local game store, and there are so many Popper events going on at local game stores, and yet they are required to run a Popper event at casual REL, which means that no matter how big and successful that event is, and some of these are huge, huge turnouts, but nobody is generating Planeswalker points, you can't use uh, uh, popper at that level to generate that uh, and that's seeing a shift in this could be a really helpful thing to allow stores to since you yourself described popper as a more competitive format this seems to be at odds with people who would want to compete and and grind their way up on the the circuit yeah i mean once again it's not really my department i at understand all. that but I, when it yeah. comes to the organized play side of things it's not really where i jam quite as much but I am happy to take that feedback back and see what we can do to get that into a Wizards event reporter. All right, awesome, awesome. I, it's, it's, I know it's not the most satisfying answer, oh, but no, no, I'll, I'll do what I can. Okay. Well, we uh, and I do, and I do want to say that I know you're in our corner. Uh, 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 I know that you are a Popper fan. Um, then going back into your wheelhouse, what are some ways that you could envision us, besides just giving Red a sweeper, uh, helping? diversify the colors that are present in Popper to try and combat the idea that everything in Popper is blue, which it isn't, but blue certainly is very, very powerful. Uh, uh, as a Popper player yourself, are there ideas you have for ways that uh, uh, we can see the other colors uh, pack a punch? Well, yeah, I mean, it, the thing about Popper is it's a eternal format, right? Mm -hmm. It runs all the way back to the beginning. Right. And if you look at eternal formats, historically blue has been an extraordinarily strong color because for the lion's share of, of the early days of Magic, it just was the color to play, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've got all, all these really strong cards, many of which were at common. So it, it, that there's kind of a natural imbalance there. Um, with that said, you look at the top of the Popper meta game, you see things like, yes, there's Delver and other blue decks, but there's Elves, which is green and doing quite well. There's the Kaldotha Boros deck, which I love, by the way. That's a deck that, the it's Monarch fun. deck, yeah. like, only really exists in, mo in Modern, which is super fun. Or, right. sorry, it, it only really exists in Popper, which is super fun. You get to, like, get the Monarch and try and keep it, and then, you know, pick up, like, these trinkety artifacts with your core Skyfishers to draw more cards. Like, really, really, really cool. Um, you see, like, a mono black deck that people are running around with. And granted, are these decks as strong as mono blue? You'll get a lot of different opinions about that, or blue right. red delver, a lot of different opinions about the, how that breaks down. But I think a lot of these decks could be with a tiny push. Right. Right? So, you know, not only looking at, at a card like a red sweeper or a big green fatty, but there are tools we can give the mono black deck, you know, uh, more heavy black cost commons that give it uh, the, the kind of long staying power it needs. Right? There's all kinds of things we can do to amp up these decks and tiny little cards we can add here there to make a difference to help balance things out. Blue is always going to be strong because as long as cards like Counterspell stay legal in the format, like blue just has this really, and you know, Ponder, Preordain, um, like these, this card selection, Counter Magic, that's been the cornerstones of eternal formats that are far more powerful than Popper. But that doesn't mean that other decks can't be competitive and good too. And the fact that Popper has a wide range from quick aggressive decks to long game controlling decks that literally win with 
10 cards in their library, see my teachings deck sometime, <laughs> right? I mean, it, you can play a wide gamut of things. And is blue powerful? Yes. Are other colors uh, competitive? Yes. And that's the thing that our play design team is certainly going to look at as they make our future decisions, and that we as designers can try and internalize and look at as we make more cards. So I know that in formats such as modern, it is problematic, to say the least, to perhaps offer a full up upgraded modern deck for $19.99 for so many reasons, especially that you don't want people who have worked really hard to trade or have saved uh, their cards over the years to suddenly see uh, uh, that much of a reprint product offered at that price. I know that's Wizards' stance on that, but does Wizards, do you think, still have the same stance on commons? Is it possible that we might see fully upgraded tier one popper decks, all the reprints, all the value, because it's just commons? I know you can't do that with modern. You can't put a play set of every fetch land in a box for $9.99, even though there are many arguments to be said for you doing that, but I understand why you won't do that with fetch lands. Are commons enough removed from that equation that, yeah, listen, 999 tier one popper decks, no problem. It's just commons after all, or are they still going to fall into that same territory? Do you think of, well, we, we don't want people to be sad. Yeah, well, one thing, first of all, is no matter what deck you release, let's say that we go down that path and we were to make a popper product that had the ultimate top tier right. deck, right? Uh, I'll say the best version of Delver you can find. Right. Well, different people are going to disagree. The best version of Mono Black you could find, the best version right. of Elves you could find, the best version of Affinity you could find, the best version of uh, uh, Mono White Heroic that you could find. Right, and the list goes on for decks and uh, let's, it, I think it, people it, will be happy it, with those five. It, it's a wide format. But anyway, um, there's a trick in that if you ask five different Delver players what the best Delver list looked like, you might get five different answers on those cards. So could we give you uh, a, you know, a fully upgraded, ready-to-go deck? Yeah, possibly. Is everyone going to agree on what the right deck list is? Well, you'll have some discordance around about that in the community. But I would absolutely expect, you know, if we were to do a Delver deck, you would have all the staples. You would have, you know, your four Delvers in there, your four counter spells in there, all the stuff you need. But sometimes when we're making decks, and we see this with things like Challenger decks too, instead of being like, okay, this is the version that's playing, I don't, I don't know, card X, we're going to include a few card X, a few card Y, and a few card Z, so that you can kind of try them all out, pick which one you like the most, and then hone in on that one, because different Delver players have different opinions on which version they like. And similarly, that means that you could buy two or three copies of this product, and then have all the cards you need for the version you want to play the most. So in anything, like a Challenger deck, you'd expect to see a bunch of the staples, or any kind of pre-con deck like this, you'd expect that's meant for competitive play, you would see a bunch of the staples, and then around the fringes, the things people are less sure about, is where you'd see some of that variation, is what I would anticipate. So were there, hypothetically, uh, mono black control uh, popper precon four oubliettes? It's Two oubliettes? One oubliette? Like, it's certainly uh, possible, but certainly even, even possible. when I look at those deck yeah. lists online, not all of them play four oubliettes. That's true. Uh, some play two oubliettes, some play three or four three oubliettes, or four. some play zero. Now it's yes, possible. but there's a reason for that, it's, but we won't get into it. It's possible they just don't have access to them. <laughs> um, but even online, where it's a lot easier to obtain Oubliette than in real life, because you know that came out ages and ages and ages ago, I still see decklists without Oubliette in it sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. there's different players with different opinions. If we were to do one, would we include it? Probably. Would we include four? I don't know the answer to that question. We'd have to think about it and try it out, and of course our crack play design team would work and try and figure out what they thought the best version of the, of the deck would be. And I. Frankly, Play Designs has been doing such a great job, I just trust them at this point. Like, they play test it, they come back with the right answer, and as a product architect, I believe they're going to do the right thing. I have to trust them on that. So, if we're working on such a product, I would leave it in their hands and uh, more or less trust what they say, unless it looked really off. If their mono black deck came back to me with four blue cards in it, I'd be like, mm, doesn't quite look right to me. But in general, I trust what they do. Fantastic. Now, speaking of blue and speaking of black, if you had to build a popper deck and you weren't using blue or black, oh no! You, Gavin Verke, what would you play if I forbid you from playing blue or black cards in popper? Well, unfortunately or fortunately, that's easy because the deck that I play after blue black teachings is elves. 
Really? I, I, yeah, You're I an elf. elf. I didn't. You didn't strike me as an elf man. I have probably played elves in more tournaments and actually probably just more really? more games of elf decks than any other deck in Magic history. Yes. I played the combo elf deck and old extended. I was at Pro Tour Berlin where elves played out. Yeah. I played combo elves there. I played combo elves in modern. I played elves in standard. I played it in popper all the way down. I give me like a nettle sentinel and little sure. elves and that will make magic happen too. Popper elves is hot. Well, Gavin, I really want to thank you for being here, and especially because you really agreed to let me lob just about anything I wanted at you. In fact, for those uh, uh, who want a little behind the scenes, for this uh, Popper Q&A, I did not have to get anything pre-approved, which is quite a thing that I want to that I appreciate. And so a lot of those questions that I threw your way, I thought I, uh, were, were definitely feet to the fire. And I thank you for allowing your feet to go to that fire. I know Popper is something you care about. It is a format that you play. And I'm really glad that we've got someone like you in R&D uh, working behind the scenes for our proper cause. Right, and absolutely, and, and I can't guarantee anything. You know, I've given no. the best answers I can today. It's a format that I enjoy, but I'm glad so many of you all are enjoying it. And please, if you're enjoying it, keep playing it. Play it on Magic Online. Go out to Channel Fireball's events. Go out to Card Kingdom's events. Go and visit all the mini events that are out there. Show us that you love it, because really, it's your feedback that helps us make future products and future decisions. So thank you so much, and yeah, I've had a blast with the format. Thanks for talking about it, Prof. <laughs> the tears are so delicious. He'll never see it coming. I bet he never saw it coming. What he doesn't know is the Murfilk and War of the Spark are great. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, Professor, taste it. Can you taste the pain? Um. Um, yes, cry, Professor, cry. I need, I need those tears, tears! And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.